In this video, you will learn how to create your first PLC circuit. So we will control a pneumatic cylinder with the PLC. So let's start by creating our pneumatic circuit. So we'll start by taking a double acting cylinder. We will take a 5-2 way valve with a solenoid on it. Now we're going to connect these two elements together. We need a pressure source and an exhaust, so let's take the pressure source and two exhaust. To duplicate the exhaust on the other side, you simply hold the control key down while moving it and it automatically makes a copy. Now we can test the pneumatic circuit, simulation, normal simulation, and if we trigger you see that the cylinder works perfectly. So now let's build a PLC to control this pneumatic circuit. So we'll need to go into ladder file and Bradley and take a run, which will drag directly on a drawing like that. Then we'll need an input card and an output card. These cards are located in the electrical control library. The last section PLC card and we'll bring in an input card and an output card. So we will need electrical control elements to actually trigger some inputs on the card and get activated by the output to control a pneumatic circuit. So we'll need a push button. We'll take, first we'll energize the card. And I will need a push button here, which I will call start. We we'll link that with the 24 volt. And I need to put a common at the bottom here of my card. Now I need to do the same thing on the output card, and I need to have a solenoid to trigger the valve. So I will come here, solenoid, and I will call this Sol1. I'll need again a 24 volt. And a common on the card. which I will connect. Now I need to connect the valve with my solenoid here on the output card. Click twice on the valve, select the solenoid, and then we need to look for Sol1. So we'll use a filter here and put an S for Sol, and here is Sol1. Click twice on it, automatically the line adds at the bottom, confirming that the link was done. Once we close this window, we can see that now they are both hyperlinked together Therefore, the connection is well made. Let's go on to the PLC to actually put the programmation inside the run. So let's put a normally open contact, which I will link with my in zero of the card. So I click twice on it. Again, I'm going to filter for I. Here's my in zero. If I double click on it, automatically the link is confirmed. Close. And now I can see that this normally open contact is linked to the E1 card, the N0 of E1 card. Let's zoom back all components. I'm going to take out an output here, which I will link to out0. So if I click twice on it, I'm going to filter to out. And here's my out0. Click twice on it. And then the link is made to my out zero. So if I connect this together, now if I start the simulation, once I trigger start, I'm going to energize this contact, which will automatically go to Sol1. So now we're controlling this electro-pneumatic circuit with PLC. Now let's add an internal relay for an internal bit, for example, just to show you how it works. So first of all, we'll move this out zero down here. And we're going to put another output here, 
which we'll name like a internal bit. Let's call it B3 column 0 slash 0. And we approve. I'm going to take a normally open contact again here, which I will link to my B3 0 slash 0. Click twice on it, use a filter, put a B, and here is my component. Click twice on it, the link is made, and now I'm going to have a latch on my B3. So in order to trigger the out zero, I'm going to have to put another B3 contact on this line. I can either take it from the library again, or I can simply hold the control key down and drag this contact down here, which I will link to out zero. So now I will trigger the solenoid of the valve, but it's going to be maintained in that position. So I needed to make it retract after a while. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the limit switch on that cylinder to read when it's fully extend. So we'll go in pneumatic. And I'm going to take here a proximity sensor, which I will place on my cylinder. And I will name it Prox1. I'm going to place it down here like that. And Prox1 will be will have to trigger an input on my card. So I'm going to come into the electrical control library, take a normally open proximity switch. I'm going to put it on in two. And this is going to be linked to Prox1. So if I click twice on it, I'm going to filter to P. And here's Prox1. Click twice. And now they're both linked together. Let's energize Prox12. So now I'm going to put a normally open contact again, which needs to be linked to N2. So I'll go into my Allen Bradley and open contact here, which I will link to N2. So click twice on it. Again, filter with an I. N2, click twice then it's actually linked to N2. Once the cylinder reach is fully extract position, I want to trigger a timer of three seconds before it retracts. So I'm going to go into Allen Bradley. I'm going to expand the section. I'm going to take a timer, which I will drop here on the schematic. I'm going to link it like that. And right now its preset time is 10 seconds, which is, which is a bit too long for me. So let's click twice on it. And we're going to go into the data where we'll change the preset value to 3 seconds. If we close, now we see that it's set to 3 seconds. So once it reached 3 seconds, I want that DN output to actually cut the signal to my B3. So I will take a normally close contact here, which I will link to the DN of my timer. Click twice on it, go into variable assignment, filter D, here's the DN, click twice, and now this is linked, cutting the B3 column zero slash zero, my internal relay. So let's try that simulation now. If we go simulation, push start, goes to the end, start the counting down three, and then we track. Let's start that again. I'm going to go into slow motion. So now if I start, you see that it's triggering the valve. When prox one is triggered, my input to close. Counter start counting till three. When it's going to reach three, it's going to activate D1, which will open, therefore, cylinder will retract. And the cylinder retract. Another feature which you can also do in the PLC library is actually change the way you want to display the internal ID or addresses on your contact. Let's zoom in this section a bit. So you see right now my contact shows E1 dot and N0. 
But let's say you want to show the addresses of your PLC. And from here, in the address, you can change the way it is displayed. So for example, let's put I column zero slash and then the input. And if you check this box, you will actually display on your drawing the addresses. So if you close this window now, you'll see that you have all the addresses. And right now this contact shows the internal ID of Automation Studio. If you want that contact to display the address, all you need to do is you click twice on it. Then you just click here on address. You close it. So you see the address is over here. Now you can erase the other one and just keep the address on it. You can do the same thing for this one. You can click twice and just say display the address. Okay, and then when you close, again, you just erase the internal ID and you put the address. So for example, if you copy this contact and you want to link it to input 6, you click twice, you go variable assignment, you go input, and if you click twice on input 6, you'll see that now the link is made to input 6. You do not have to change the addresses to be displayed. Once you set the component to display the address, if you copy that component, it's going to remain the same. Therefore, if you want, you can create your custom library like we showed you in a previous video. And you can have a section called PLC where you can actually drag your card, preset with all the addresses, as well as the contact to display the address instead of the internal ID. Thank you for your time, and I invite you to watch the other training videos. Thank you.